Well, Susan, thanks so much for inviting me over to come uh, look at listing your property. What I'd like to do first is I want to take you through uh, the selling process. Now, I've broken the selling process down into eight steps, and I find if I do all eight steps, I'm successful and the house sells. So if we look at it here, step number one is understanding uh, current market conditions. I'm going to share with you shortly what's going on in our marketplace. Two is assessing or appraising the value of your home. And I've done a market analysis here to that effect, and we'll get to that shortly. Step three is setting the right price. And I think you'll agree with me that this is the most critical step in the process. Yes. Right. Step four is calculating your bottom line. And based on my market analysis, I've done what we call a net sheet, which will show what your costs will be and what you can expect to net from the sale of the home. Mm -hmm. Step five is preparing your home for sale. And should we decide to go into business together, I'll be happy to take you through your home and let you know what you need to do to stage it to maximize the value you get for it. Step number six is advertising and marketing your home. And unless you've got any specific questions, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that today. Suffice to say, we're a very aggressive marketer of real estate. Now, step number seven is where my work, quite frankly, begins. And that's when we start receiving offers, qualifying the buyer, making sure indeed they can afford to buy the home, helping you negotiate it to get the best price in terms for you. And then dealing with things like inspections, contingencies, appraisals, that sort of thing, until ultimately we get on to step eight, which is getting you settled in your home. Okay? Now, with that in mind, what I want to do is share with you what is going on in our market right now. And what we do is we call this a total market overview. And basically what it is, it's a snapshot of our residential real estate market in Spokane. Now, if you look at this, you can see that we've broken this down into price ranges. And currently there are 3,079 homes listed for sale in the Spokane market, right? That's the bad news, right? Now, as you look at this, what price range do you think your home falls in? Probably right about in the middle range. Okay. Are you, you thinking in this range here, 150, 175? Uh -huh. Okay. I think so. Well, great. Well, let, let's take a look at this and I'll, I'll share with you what's going on in this range. Now, currently there are 292 homes currently listed for sale, right? As I said, that's the competition. Now, the next column represents those homes that have actually received offers that have been accepted and are on their way to closing. We call those pendings. And right now there are 202 pendings. So currently, in this, in this price range, there are 69.2% of all the homes on the market have received an accepted offer. That's phenomenal. In fact, this is the busiest I've ever seen our market since I've been in the business. That's good. Yeah, it is very good. Now, in the, in the last six months, we've had 10 homes, only 10 homes expire in this price range. And what I mean by that is basically the market rejected those houses and they didn't sell and they came off the market, okay? Mm -hmm. However, in the last six months, we've closed 394 homes. Now, what I mean by that is these homes all have new owners. And the reason I share this number with you is that this is six months worth of sales activity. So it's six months is 394. However, if we go back and we look at the pendings, which really represent the last 30 days, because our average escrow period is about 30 to 40 days long, we have 202. So if I were to multiply this number by six, you can see it would far exceed 394, right. right? Now, in this price point, the average list price of the homes for sale is 161,501, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the average list price. Now, the average list price of the homes that actually sold was 161,701. So the homes that are selling are selling actually for a little more than what they listed. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this, of course, is our lower interest rates right now, and it's actually a lack of inventory in the marketplace. Now, if you look at our market, other than the very bottom, which is below 50,000, everything that sells in our market sells within one to 2% of list price. Now, the reason I share this with you is a lot of people say, well, Bruce, you know what, I agree with your market analysis. However, I'd like to price it five or $10,000 higher, so I've got room to negotiate. Mm -hmm. Well, there are two challenges with that. One is, the people who can afford to buy your home aren't looking five and ten thousand dollars outside of their price range. And secondly, those who are looking that much higher are now comparing you with homes that are worth five and ten thousand dollars more. So consequently, you don't get the offers. So when you look at this, you can see one, you don't need to build a buffer in, right, right to get in order to get your price. My recommendation to you would be to price it at market value and don't negotiate. See, I'd rather bring you 10 offers, have you reject nine of them because they don't come up to your price, than not bring you any offers at all. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And and I'd rather that too. Okay, great. (laughs) We're on the same page then. Now, um, the other significant number here is the average number of days on market. And right now in this price range, the average number of days on market is 53. Mm -hmm. Okay, And, and basically that's from the time the house went on the market to the time it came off because it went pending under contract. So you would need to add another 30 to 40 days to that uh, mm-hmm. to get the, the average time frame from the time you put your house on the market to the time you get to move to the next one. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you again, how quickly did you want to move? Just as soon as I possibly can. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Now, um, again, in terms of looking at this pricing, what I've done here is I've done this little target. And what it shows is that if you want to sell, and you can see here based on our numbers, that if you want to sell, you need to be within 2% of market value. That's where the offers are occurring. And what you'll find is the further you are off of price, the less activity you're going to get. And you and I both have the same goal, and that's to get your home sold. So this is the big picture. Do you have any questions about this? I don't think so at this okay, time. Okay, great. Mm-mm. So what I'd like to do now, Susan, is narrow the focus down to your home. And, and with that in mind, I've done a market analysis to that effect. Now, when we look to do a market analysis, ideally what we're doing is looking to compare your property to other similar homes. Okay, now I'm not going to find exactly the same home, but I'm looking at things like bedrooms, bathrooms, garages, lot size, location, all those types of things to find comparable properties. Now, on paper, this is how your home shows. It's a rancher style. You're at 3,328 square feet, five bedroom, three bath, two car attached garage, and it's a 27 year old home and it's on approximately an acre, right? And of course, you have all these other wonderful features as well. Now, first thing we do is we look at those homes that are currently on the market, because these homes really represent what the competition is. Now, they don't necessarily represent value because they haven't sold yet, but we need to look at them because they are competition. First one here is on Crestline. You can see this one's listed at 525. It's a 4,600 square foot house, four bedroom, three bath, four plus car garage. And DOM, by the way, is days on market. So this one's been on the market 106 days. And it's a 27 year old home as well. Um, This one's almost an acre lot as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next one here is on uh, Overbluff. And this one's listed at 489, 850. It's 4,090 square feet, four bedroom, three bath, two car garage. And this one's been on the market 175 days. Okay. And obviously these are all in your neighborhood here. Mm -hmm. Next one uh, on 25th, listed at 469.9, 3,498 square feet, five bedroom, three bath, two car attached garage. And this one's been on the market 71 days. And it's a 40 year old home, so a little bit older, Mm -hmm. uh, half acre lot. On 24th Avenue, uh, this one is listed at 595. Uh, six bedroom, four bath, three car garage, and this one's been on the market 100 days. So you can see we've got a little bit longer market times uh, in this neighborhood here. Mm-hmm. And of course our map here shows where your property is uh, and where our subjects are, our other uh, comparables. Now the next group I look at is those that are pending. And what I mean by that is these have been on the market, have received offers that have been accepted, and they're on their way to close. Okay. So this one here on Pittsburgh, listed at 539.9. 3,472 square feet, four bedroom, four bath, four plus car garage. It was on the market 134 days before it received that offer. And you can see it's located here in relationship to you. Same neighborhood, comparable area. Now, we take a look at the recently sold, and these really are the best indicator of market value because they show what people are willing to pay for similar type homes. Now the first one here is on Overbluff, and you can see this one was listed at 569,950. It actually sold for 551, 4,023 uh, square feet, four bedroom, three bath, uh, three car garage, and it was on the market only 38 days. Next one on Garfield, this one was listed at 499,9, sold for 499,9, 3,817 square feet, five bedroom, four bath, two car attached garage. It was on the market for 148 days but they still got full price. It's a good thing. Now, this is where you're located and here's where the two subject properties are. Again, you know the, the neighborhood, these homes are in your neighborhood. The last group we look at are those that have expired, which means that they were basically rejected by the market and they came off the market and did not sell during the term of their listing. Now the first one here is this one on Overbluff, which we just saw as a sold. And it was on the market previously for 359 days at 569,950. So, the market hadn't yet caught up to 
the price and you know we're seeing an escalation in prices right now in our marketplace. Mm -hmm. But again, 4,023 square feet, four bedroom, three bath, three car garage, and it's a 16 year old home. And that was really the only expired in the entire neighborhood. So based on uh, my market analysis, what you see here is just a summary of all these properties we just looked at. These are the homes that are currently listed on the market so you can see where the competition is. And then you've got the recent sales, and we have two here, one at 499.9 and the other one at 569.950. And then we get we have one pending at 539.9 and we have an expired at 569.950. So you understand my methodology of how I'm moving forward here. Yes, sir. Right? I do. Okay, yes. great. Uh -huh. Based on my market analysis, I believe you're somewhere here between 525 and 550. Okay. Now the 525 is I want to get it sold quickly. The 550 is I want to sell it in a reasonable amount of time, but I still expect to get my money. Okay. okay. Now you indicated to me that that you were looking to get the, the home sold quickly. Correct. As you saw as we looked through the market analysis, there were a lot of mar uh, long market times. Yes. Right. Yes. So where do you feel the home should be priced? I think I really need to concede to your opinion on that. Okay. Um, it, you're the professional. Okay. Well, my recommendation would be that we price it at 525. I think you'll get a quicker sale that way. And I expect you to get your money. Okay. Okay. Now, with that in mind, what I want to share with you is what we call the net sheet. All right? mm -hmm. This is where all of your costs show up. Now, uh, at 525, we're going to be looking at closing costs of about 35,000 with a net of $489,805 approximately. Okay? okay. So the first question I have to ask you is, does this number make financial sense for you? Yes, it does. Okay, great. Well, let me take you through these expenses. Now, all of these expenses are mandatory bar one. And that one expense that isn't is what we call a home warranty plan. Okay? You see it's $300. Now, the reason I recommend this is what I found is if ever there's a problem between a buyer and a seller, it's because right after the buyer moves in, something breaks down. Well, the first person they call is me, second person they call is you. And next thing you know, you and I are sitting around a table with them in small claims fighting over a $500 hot water tank because the hot water tank went out. And I've even had buyers say to me, you know, the sellers knew there was a problem with that hot water tank. In fact, that's why they're selling the house, which of course is ridiculous, right? So the reason that this shows up here is that you don't pay any money until the house closes. Now it does two things. It protects you for the duration of the listing as the seller. It covers things like the hot water tank, electrical, plumbing, built-in kitchen appliances, your jetted tub, um, and some other sundry items. But the real benefit, however, is from the date of closing, it'll cover the buyer for 12 months for all those items plus the furnace. And if they want, they can buy coverage for your pool and, and that sort of thing as well, okay? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, you don't, the reason it shows up here is you don't pay for this unless the house sells, all right? Yes. Now, the rest of these expenses are mandatory and let me take you through them. First one is we have a closing attorney's fee and this is a discounted fee uh, because we do a lot of transactions and they can't give us a discount but they can uh, apply it to our clients, okay? Second is excise tax, and basically this is a sales tax that the seller has to pay. Um, in Spokane County, it's 1.78%, so you can see it's a big chunk of change, all right, $9,345. The home warranty we talked about. Now, the commission I've broken out as uh, two 3% fees, right? I call a marketing fee, that's my commission, and uh, a selling office fee. And that is what I consider a worst case scenario, and that would be if there is another realtor involved. However, with my hassle-free program, if I sell it myself, this 3% here goes away and this one becomes 4 Okay. Now, if you bring me the buyer and there's no other realtor involved, then I'll write it and close it and take care of all the details for 1%. And of course, the, the, the final option is if you find a buyer and you don't want me involved, I'll be happy to tear up our listing agreement and you can go and do it yourself. Okay. So what I'm trying to share with you here is what I consider worst case scenario and my goal is to beat it, okay? Now, I pad my net sheets with about $100 in miscellaneous charges. Things like tax registration, flood determination, FedEx fee to pay off your existing mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, 
We don't have your mortgage payoff here, so we'll skip by that. We have a reconveyance fee here, which basically is an administrative fee that removes your lien from title and places the purchaser in title, and that'll be $70 uh, dollars there. You do have a mortgage on the property, correct? Correct. Okay, great. Um, selling office fee, that is if the, the other realtor is here. Uh, you, no septic system. Title insurance, this number here reflects a 15% discount. If you can give me a copy of your existing title insurance policy, I'll make a copy of it, give it to the title company, and they will give you a discount of 15% because they only have to search back to that policy. Um, and we have what we call a utility holdback. And in the state of Washington, the closers are required to hold out money to pay off your final water sewer bill. And the reason they do that is if it's unpaid, it becomes a lien against title ahead of any mortgage that goes there. So they'll pay your final water sewer bill and then they'll refund you the balance, usually within about a week to 10 days after closing. So you're going to be looking at costs, worst case scenario, about 35000 Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So let me ask you this. When would you like us to go to work for you? Right away. Okay, great. Well, I've got the papers here. We'll go from there.